Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some friends to lovers romance recommendations. I personally believe that friends to lovers is superior to enemies to lovers. You can fight me all you want. You will not change my mind. Um, I love it a lot. <laughs> so um, here are 10 books that I love that have the friends to lovers trope in them. First is Powerless by Elsie Silver. This is the third book in the Chestnut Spring series, a romance series that was all the rage this year. And like, for a reason this series is really good it's about um these brothers this family that live in chestnut springs and so this is about kind of like the adoptive brother of sorts jasper finding his romance he has always been best friends with sloan who is the cousin to the eaton brothers um jasper was adopted basically into their family so they're not related at all so don't, don't worry about that um so this book starts out with sloan trying to or about to get married to another guy jasper does not like this guy he absolutely despises him and he is like thrilled when sloan goes up to him the day of the wedding and it's like i don't want to do this I don't want to marry this guy. And so he helps her become a runaway bride. So they end up going on a road trip of sorts um, across the country while Jasper is playing hockey. Sloan is there to help him and support him along the way. And throughout their journey, they end up admitting their very pent up and what they thought was unrequited feelings for each other. I love a good mutual pining book. I love the idea of two people loving each other without like the other person knowing like they think that the other person doesn't love them but they do and then when it's revealed that they do love them it's absolutely beautiful and like it makes my heart sore and that's what happened in here between Jasper and Sloan. Their romance is absolutely beautiful a great friends lovers romance that I totally recommend. This next one is interesting because it's actually fake friends to friends to lovers so this is If Only You by Chloe Lisa. This is the sixth book in the Bergman Brothers series, or Bergman's sister, if you will, because this one's about Ziggy, who is a Bergman sister. Um, so this series is about a family called the Bergmans finding their partners in life, the loves of their life, and you got to read about Ziggy throughout the whole series. Um, at the beginning of this series, she was just like a younger sister in high school, recently diagnosed with autism, um, and now she's all grown up. <laughs> she is in her early 20s. She is making her name in the soccer world. Um, and she is sick of being the baby of the family. She wants like not to be coddled all the time. And she thinks a way she can do that is to become fake friends with her brother's very notoriously known bad boy teammate on the hockey team. So her brother Ren plays hockey and Sebastian is known as the like team bad boy essentially. She's like, okay, this guy will like roughen up my reputation. I don't want to be known as like the little girl anymore. Um, so she makes a proposition to him and is like, hey, can we just like pretend to be friends? Like hang out every now and then, like let the media see us. I want to get my name out there, but not in the way that my parents do. So they become fake friends that leads to more. I love Ziggy and Sebastian so much. In this book, Sebastian is um, being diagnosed with celiac disease. So I love that representation as someone who has celiac. So I really appreciate that. Chloe has celiac disease herself as well. So um, I just love to sing that own voices rep. Um, but this is a great book. Like so good. I haven't read a book before where both characters are um, athletes. Like both of them are. They both play different sports. So that was really cool in here because you got to see both of them like cheering on the other person from the sidelines during their games. Super great. I love this one. Ooh, we have two books by Miss Hannah Bonham Young. First is Out on a Limb. Um, this is my favorite book of the year. I love it so much. This is about Bo and when, and you wouldn't think that a one night stand to more romance would be friends to lovers, but it is. They meet at this Halloween party. They're both dressed up as pirates and um, they end up having a grand old time together. Uh, but then Wynn finds out that she's pregnant because of it and she really wants to have this baby. And um, Bo is there every step of the way. He even says like, come move in with me where you live isn't like the best place for a baby. And I wanna be a part of this baby's life. I wanna be a part of your life. And they kind of hold off on the feelings that have been growing for the other person um, while they've been staying together because they don't want to ruin their relationship and like what could happen when they're parenting with this baby. They want the best for the baby. So they kind of hold off on their feelings, but they are definitely falling in love. I love this book so much. It means like everything to me. I love every single aspect of it. I could gush about this book all day, but I'm not going to. <laughs> if you want like a holiday novella, there's Set the Record Straight by Hannah Bonham Young. 
This one, I love the progression of friends to lovers in here. This is a sapphic romance. So Evan and Clara have been best friends for years, um, ever since I think they were in high school, if I'm not mistaken. And Evan is out while Clara doesn't really have a label for herself, really. Um, she's always thought of herself as straight, but then these two fake date um, for a specific reason. I don't want to spoil it, but they fake date and they have like a fake kiss, if you will. And Clara realizes after that kiss, like, whoa, I don't think I'm straight. <laughs> I think I'm in love with my best friend and Evan has been actually like been in love with her best friend for years but I always thought that Clara was straight so she wasn't gonna do anything about it but uh their fake dating relationship definitely turns into something more a grand old little novella read that you should totally read during the holiday season like please pick it up next is Torn by Carrie and Cole this is a forbidden age gap romance this is about Torin and Kenzie so Torn was 15 when his best friends two of his best friends um had a baby Kenzie. Torin has been there her whole entire life and they've essentially grown up together if you think about it. Like he was 15 when she was born and they've grown up together all these years. She is now I think 17, 18 at the beginning of this book. They've never had like feelings for each other at all, like at all growing up. Like they've been best friends. Sorry for the dogs barking. <laughs> they've been best friends their whole lives um, or Kenzie's whole life. Um, half of Torn and they've only ever really thought about each other as like their best friend um, but then something shifts at the beginning of this book when Kenzie is close to 18 and they realize that they have feelings for each other and it is like epic and they don't know what to do about it because it would absolutely wreck Kenzie's dad because that's her dad's best friend like Torn's her dad's best friend so um, it's very forbidden quite a large age gap but these two are destined to be together. Next is Northern Stars by Brittany Cherry. This is the last book in her Compass series, which you can totally read as a standalone, if you will. Aiden and Haley live in this very small town and they grew up as next door neighbors and they quickly became fast friends. When they were in high school, they ended up developing romantic feelings for each other um, and they ended up actually dating, but then Aiden gets this job as an actor. Haley's world suddenly shifts and the media find out that he has a girlfriend and they go all in like body shaming her and bullying her online and figuring out like who she is and diminishes her mental health to an extreme amount and then something happens their senior year where they have not spoken like since that point this book then jumps another five years when Aiden is now a famous actor and he comes back to the small town I think for like the holiday season and he is forced to finally confront Haley Haley's forced to confront him and um, they've both missed each other. They've missed their best friend, um, but things have happened in these past five years that's changed both of them. Um, but deep down, they want their best friend back. So this is a great read. I normally don't like time jump romances where like the characters fall in love with their younger and then it time jumps when they're older and it's kind of second chance, if you will, the second half of the book, um, but she does it so well. Like I will read all of Brittany's books and she does this in a few of them and I love it. She does it really well. One of my favorite books of the year is Broken by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is a alien romance. However, like if you're not really into alien romances and you want to get into them, um, like these read like fantasy romances. The only difference, the only reason why they're aliens is because it's on another planet. Um, and like the only alien qualities to them are like, they have like gold skin, gold or red eyes, um, and they have a tail. So it's like the only difference. So like if you're freaked out by like, or skeeved out by like alien romance, like the different features on them and stuff like that. <laughs> like, I feel like this series is definitely one to go with. Like it reads like a fantasy romance series. And the Dakar people who are the like natives to the planet totally remind me of the Dothraki people like from Game of Thrones, but they're aliens. Like, yes. Okay. So this one's about Maeva who was adopted, who's a human woman, who was adopted into a Dakar family village when she was a baby. She was found as a baby in the woods by the village. And she's the only human living in this village, but she's raised along the other with the other Dakar people. And she was even bullied as a child due to the fact that she's the only human, but the person to save her is our hero growing up. His name is Kieran, and he's basically the prince of the village, if you will. Her, his dad like runs the village um, and they do everything together. He's there for her like 24 seven loves her, they love each other, like they're best fast friends. Then Kieran comes to an age where um, he can start courting women, if you will. And there's this ceremony during like this meal, women who want to put themselves out there to like be courted by him, like come and 
put a goblet on his table and whoever's goblet he drinks from is the woman he chooses and Maeva goes up there and puts her goblet on the table and he like publicly rejects her in front of everybody and she's been in love with this man for years and she is absolutely heartbroken and devastated. This book then jumps 10 years, 10 years. <laughs> Maeva is still heartbroken about what happened. There's some other things that have happened in the meantime to make her heart break even more. Um, but Kieran comes back to the village and is determined to make Maeva his, like determined. So it's kind of like friends to enemies to lovers, if you will, but like, it's so good. I love this book so much. It's one of my favorite books of all time now. It's, oh, I love these two so much and what they go through. It's beautiful. I want to reread it right now. Like it's making, putting me in the mood to reread this. <laughs> Next up, if you know Bella's, the first one is Go Deep by Risley Adams. I heard one of this book is a romance writer and she's gotten a few reviews on her latest books saying that like the hot scenes just aren't really doing it for them anymore. And so she needs to get inspired. So she asks her best friend who happens to be a man to help her with that. They never really saw each other as like anything but friends, um, but he helps her out and asked to like act out some things with him. Through their like physical intimacy, they realize like, oh, whoa, I actually do have feelings for you. So it's a quick short novella about these two, like figuring out that they love their best friend. It's really hot, it's really good, great friends to lovers. Another one is Cry Baby by Marina Babancos. We read this for the novellathon, I think back in like May, I wanna say. Um, and it is a great choice. Um, this is an MM romance and um, <laughs> one of the men, needs help from his best friend because he's like, I think I might be gay, but um, like, I don't really know. I've never been with a guy before. Can you like help me out? He really wants to ask out the specific person. And I don't really know how else to describe it, but his friends love lovers. This guy has been longing after the other, like they both been longing after each other. Let's just say that. Um, they both have been. And the dam finally breaks in this one. Like one of them kind of comes up with the scheme of like, ooh, I need love lessons, help me out. <laughs> Cause I need to ask out this guy, but it's actually, his friend he wants to ask out so and the last one that i have is when we first met by cara by stone our heroine and her cat lives across the hall from her crush and his roommate quentin and she has no clue that quentin himself is full on crushing on her they start spending time together they start becoming friends and then the more time she spends with quentin she realizes oh i think i'm crushing on this guy instead of the guy i originally thought i had a crush on like oh no <laughs> but then Quint yeah quentin's been longing after her for quite a long time so it ended up being fine obviously carpa stone knows how to write like a sweet cute romance so i really recommend this one if you want a short like big city neighbors romance anyways they have it those were some friends to lovers romance recommendations let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me an emoji with um, like people holding hands. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.